What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Monday night rookie round table. And, um, you know, this call is designed to help you move forward in the real estate space. I know a lot of people have some experience in real estate. Some people that are here really have none, but this is a space that's going to be set for everyone. And each week we will go through a little bit of teaching. We will play a game. So it's fun and it's light. And then we're also going to network so that we get to know each other and you can form a new relationship that you might have not been able to if you weren't here. So just a little bit, there's a couple, maybe a couple new names here. I'm not 100% sure, but a little bit about me. Been in real estate for 17, 18 years now. Um, I'm 37 and currently have about uh, 50 plus million asset under management, 800 plus units, um, storage, multifamily, Short term, long term, mid term rentals, um, new builds, renovations, lease options. I've done so many things in all the spaces. Um, right now, I am definitely just focused on multifamily and things that have more units. You know, today I was out there. Nick and I were helping a friend find a house. She's like, I'm, I'm, she tells me she's a, you know, a real estate investor. I'm like, okay, cool. What do you want to buy? So she's like, I want to buy the nicest house in Summerlin, something really new. And I'm like, okay, great. What's your price range? She's like, oh, we don't really have a price range. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's going to make it a lot harder. So we saw everything from 400,000 to a million dollars in Summerlin, Las Vegas. You know, a lot of people are coming here. She's part of the, uh, kind of like crazy rich Asians, right? So they're, they have a lot of money. They buy properties in, in the United States. And most of the times they don't even le- rent it out. They just want to buy property to park money and let it. And, and that like mortgage payment is part of the maintaining of the property. For most of us, we're like, wait, we need to not have negative cash flow, you know? Um, so we're going to learn real estate investing that makes sense for most, and it's not like we're just buying properties like it's gold and we have to maintain, you know, plus a maintenance fee every single month. So we'll determine what is a good uh, investment today, both in the single family and the multifamily side. We got a chance to look at all these properties. I was just sharing with the teens. Like to me, when I look at a single family house that is 600,000 plus, it makes me nervous. Right. Cause I look at the, I look at the market rents and we, the first thing you got to look at when you buy a property is what is the cost of maintaining and keeping this house? So that means what is the property taxes? What is the insurance? What's the mortgage payment? If you have an HOA fee, what are all the expenses put together that I have to cover every month? Right. And does the rent that I generate cover that? Right. Does the rent that I generate cover all those expenses? So that's really on a, in a simple form how you determine if a deal is worth buying. Now, these deals, typically, if you want to do a very, very fast underwriting in your, in your head about what the, what the loans and the mortgages cost, it is for every $200,000, it's, it's going to cost you about, you know, every $200,000 that you borrow, it's going to cost you about $1,000. Okay, you guys all want to pay attention here because what I'm going to be sharing, a lot of this is going to end up on the little quiz, the little game that we're going to play. And there is a leaderboard. So Nick is also still tallying up the past two weeks, you know, who's been on the leaderboard. Basically, each week, first place gets five points, second place gets four points, third place gets three points and so forth. And there is a leaderboard. And, um, you know, really, it takes one first place for you to just climb all the way to the top. So um, we're going to play a game later. So pay attention to what I'm saying, because some of the things that I share will definitely be on the quiz. Now, that is called when, you, when your rent comes in, right? So, so what is the gross income? The gross income is all the income that you can generate on this property. Okay, so it's your rent. If you can charge a pet fee, it's a pet fee. If you have an application fee, it's an application fee. All the things put together your gross income. 
then what are the expenses? What are the expenses? What's the property taxes? What's the insurance? Now this works on both single family and multifamily. Okay, fast underwritings. Once you figure out all the expenses, don't include your debt. Okay, we're going to talk about debt after. Once you include all of your expenses, that is not the cost of your mortgage. That is called your NOI. Your gross income minus all of uh, minus your gross expenses, all of your expenses. That is the NOI, which is your net operating income. Okay, very simple, right? Ask questions if you're getting lost. Net operating income is the cash flow that you have that the property generates before the debt. Now, like I was sharing, very quick, every $200,000 is going to cost you somewhere around $1,000 a month to service this debt. Now, that number, the way we come up with it in today's market, every 200000 might actually cost you around $1,200 a month. So that's why there's a, there's a challenge for people to get certain loans because interest rates are higher. All that is determined by the interest rate. So if you take $200,000 and you divide that by an interest rate plus principal, right, plus principal. So let's say it's 5% interest plus principal, another one25 Okay, you add another 1.25% to it. So that's 6.25%, right? If you borrow $200,000 and you multiply by 0.0625, that 0 0.0625 represents 6.25% in the calculator. That's going to cost you $12,000, $500, 12500 a year to service the debt. Okay, that's the cost of your debt that you borrow, the 200000 you divide that by 12 months, $1,041 is what your $200,000 will cost you every month if you got 5% interest rate. Now, today's market, 6.5% is what you're going to get, right? So you add another 1.25 to that. That's going to be 7.75. So if we take, right, so at 5% at interest rate, it's going to cost you $1,041 at 6.5% interest rate, which you got to add the principal. Remember, 1.25. So we're taking 200,000 times 0 0.0775. That's going to be 15,500 as your yearly uh, debt service. Divide that by 12 months. Now you went from $1,041 a month as your payment to $1,291. Okay, and this is why people can't afford it because in residential, they, they look at your personal financial statement. Uh, where are bridge loan rates right now? It's going to be higher. I mean, at least probably eight, you know. Um, and there's all different types of bridge. So you just have to, that's where you want to make the relationship and, and find those things. But I would say you would get nothing better than eight right now for a bridged loan. A bridge loan is the bridge, which is from now to when you get your final loan, which is your fixed agency debt, fixed, you know, insurance debt, uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, those types of those loans. Okay. Yeah. So Hawk was quoted nine, 9.5%. Right, so it's it's very expensive. Bridge debt is not for long term; it's only for short term when you're trying to add some sort of value to the property and then you refinance out of it. The reason why bridge debts are attractive for people is because it's a short term loan. They expect you to refinance out of it in two, three years. Okay, maybe even one year. There is no prepayment penalty. When you get fixed debt, which is usually lower interest rate they will charge you penalty for paying off early. Okay, sometimes it will look like a step down. So when it's a step down, first year it's 5%, they will charge you. If you try to refinance or, or, or sell it, they're going to charge you 5%. So you got to pay that. Second year is 4%. Third year, 3%. Uh, fourth year, 2%. Fifth year, 1%. And then they'll fall off. So they want you to have the loan for at least five years is what they want. Now that's called a step down. There's another type of debt, uh, another type of prepayment called yield maintenance. 
Okay, this is advanced. This is not going to be on the, the 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 quiz. Okay, so Nick, don't put this in here. Yield maintenance is based on how much the bank can trade your current loan into the market for. So what does that mean? If interest rates are high and we expect them to come down, right? If you do a yield maintenance, that means the loan that they have with you right now at 6%, it's going to cost them more to trade it out for 3% later. So that means that the penalty will be higher. If your interest rate is low and, and it goes and the interest rates are going to go up, the yield maintenance will be less because it's costing, it, they will be more profitable by trading out your loan. Does that make sense? So that's the yield maintenance. So there's step down and there's yield maintenance. A little advanced. <laughs> A little advanced. Let's, uh, let's, let's kind of just put that on the backside first. This, that's not for rookie round table. That's for, you know, maybe 102. Cla round table 102. Um, but I just want to share, like, there is that much sophistication that goes into real estate. But if you hear that multiple times and you actually experience it or you went and get a loan or whatever, and you'll be like, oh, this is what that means. You will understand it and you'll never forget it again. And it will just make sense. These are pieces of the puzzle that we got to constantly reinforce into our minds and hear it over and over and over again, because at some point you're going to put one of these things in place. You're going to have to decide which strategy I'm going to go with, what type of debt I'm going to get, what kind of prepayment penalty. Those are all things that you will have to face when you are buying a property. Now, single family, let's, let's back up a little bit. Single family, residential, up to four units. They look at your personal financial statement. Okay, that means they use something called a DTI, debt to income ratio. All right, so if you buy this property, it's going to add X amount of dollars to your expenses every month. You have to have more than double that income in order to cover it. I think it's even more than that now, right? Their debt to income is like 30 something percent. So you actually, so that means you really, your debt has to be no more than 30% of your income when you buy the property. That's why a lot of people with interest rates higher up, we just showed it in the example, 1.25 increase in interest rates, right? Is $2,000 on a $200,000 loan. $200 means you have to make 600 bucks on top a month just to be able to cover that extra 200 bucks that the loan's charging you. So most people, they qualify for a certain amount because that's their job. They have a W-2. Okay, it might be you. You can qualify for a certain amount of loan. And maybe they're, they're saying, to, you know, a year ago, before the interest rates went crazy, more than a year ago, you could have bought a $700,000 property. Today, with today's interest rates, it's climbed well more than 1.25%. Now you can only afford 500,000. Okay, so this plays a factor in the housing market. When we understand this, we really understand, okay, most of the buyers cannot compete at this level anymore, right? So somewhere around the four to 600, those houses really go fast because most people can qualify for those loans. Two, two years ago, people could that could qualify for those could have qualified for seven fifty dollars and, and more. So those houses were selling and people were pushing their houses to that price. And that's why how prices have to come down a little bit. However, if a seller sells their house that they had interest rate at 3% on, even though they make, make some money, when they go in exchange and go buy something else now, they lose what they earned on this property because they have to pay more for the next property. Okay, so they can't just trade up. And so most people are holding their properties now. And that's why inventory is low across the country, even though it's supposed to be, okay, with all things that are happening in the market, it should be a buyer's market, but it is not. Okay, no, every seller, they're holding. All right. So some sellers, I mean, you may find that you, there is an opportunity to find deals, but the good opportunity for today in today's market is that things are kind of at a standstill when they're at a standstill. That means brokers 
Okay. Brokers and all the people that used to have no time for you, they all of a sudden have all the time in the world for you now. And that's the advantage. And that's why today is where you have to go out and start making these, these, uh, making these phone calls, talking to brokers, looking at deals, you know, learning your underwriting and all of that. You want the experience now when they're giving you the time, not when they don't give you the time. Right. Two years ago, I remember when I first got into multifamily, even with so much experience under my belt in real estate, these multifamily bro brokers would not give me the time because they're too busy. Every single deal had too many offers. Now they're reaching out to me without me even calling them. Right. So that's the opportunity today. Okay. That's the single family. So debt to income ratio, they look at you, your credit score your financial statement, and that's how they qualify you for a deal. So, so far, just to recap, we learned what an NOI is. We learned how to get to the, get to the, the, the debt service, right? How much it's going to cost you. And in residential space, you need to make more money, a certain amount, 65% more than what you're spending or what the debt's going to cost. Okay, so you have to. So that's why they're like, all right, well, you have to pay off your student loans. You have to pay off these credit cards, all of these things, because they all take money every single month. So you got to take those things off, right? If you're paying $200 a month in student loans, because your, interest, your new interest rate costs your, you know, your, your debt service is 200 bucks higher. Now you got to get rid of that student loan. Okay, so now you may have to pay. 40,000, 50,000 just to get rid of that so that you can buy this house. And this is kind of the challenge that goes on. But if you understand all of this stuff, it's just more pieces of the puzzle that allows you to see the market clearer. And clarity helps you make decisions faster. And in real estate, when you can make fast decisions and take action and do things, that's when you're going to capture those opportunities. All right. So success, when you look at all the wealthy and successful people, one of the things that they have in common is that they are very fast at making decisions. They're either in or they're out. It's very quick for them. All right. So we we want to we want to train and build that for ourselves. Otherwise, we will entertain everything and we will waste a whole bunch of time and just be like, all right, I'm lost. I got too many things going on. So residential space, that's how it works multi-family space okay they don't consider your financial statements as much what they really want to look at is the property's financial statement the health of the property itself that means same thing you need to have the noi but instead of looking at the dti your debt to income ratio they call it debt service coverage ratio dscr your debt service coverage ratio means your NOI, your net operating income has to be a certain number, okay, a certain times over how much that debt service is going to be. Okay, so how does that work? Let me open up my iPad and draw it out for y'all. And remember, ask your questions, okay, before the game starts so that you can get on the leaderboard. <laughs> Uh, where am I? Okay. Every time I need to share from my iPad, it tells me to download something else. Okay. What we're talking about today is of like it's an important, but also a small portion of the real estate game itself okay it's full of so many things so um everybody can see my screen okay great all right so residential they look at dti commercial they look at DSCR. Now, DSCR is your net operating income, your NOI, 
divided by your debt service. What is that service again? That service is how much it costs you to get this loan. In the example that we showed for this, for residential, for that $200,000 loan, it cost us 1200 bucks. That is, this is your debt service. Okay, so let's go back to this where let's say debt service is 1200 bucks and the bank says, to consider this a good operating deal that we're going to give you a loan on, your DSCR has to be 1.25. Your DSCR has to be 1.25. So then what does your NOI have to be in order for this equation to have a 1.25 DSCR so that the bank says, yes, I can give you a loan based on the financial health of this property? Who can do the math? Who knows how to do this math? NOI. What does your NOI have to be if your debt service is 1200 to have 1 1.25? So I guess in school, it would look like X over 1200 equals 1 1.25. How we get this math? Let's see. I think people are posting. Are you guys posting? <laughs> ah, there you go. So how, what is the cross multiplication? Somebody write in there. See, real estate is awesome because it's math. It's very simple math. <laughs> there you go see super easy this is like seventh grade math is it i feel like yeah. seventh grade is even too advanced this is is, is more advanced like sixth grade math okay hey, but some of us are a long way from sixth and seventh grade <laughs> okay yeah. but come on it's it's multiplication i think everybody's got this jj knows this oh wait jj's older okay um yeah so x your, your NOI has to be 1500 bucks, right? So you take 1200 times 1 1.25. Makes sense. Now this math, if you are given any of the numbers, you should be any of these three numbers, you should be able to put it into your calculator and get the missing number. Right? So if we put 1500 as your NOI and you need to have a DSCR of 1.25 and I said, what is your debt service got to be? Right? That would be reversed. You would change that out. Right? How would you, how would you get that math? All right. So if, if, if <laughs> we got, we got really good math people here. So if we had 15, like, let's just change scenarios. So if we had, if we had a uh, 1500, we knew the NOI and we know it's gotta be 1.25 and we're like, all right, how much can, how much can the debt be? Yeah. So same thing. Now we're looking for the debt service. And so if we move the, if we switch these two numbers around, right? 1500 divided by 1.25. I'm like going over basic math right now, but you know, like Andrea said, some of us are far away from seventh grade and then you get 1200. Okay. Now, how do you, how do you change this number? Who knows how you change this number? If you're like, oh, wait, right now, based on my calculations, my debt is going to be 1400 a month. How do you make that number 1200? Okay, fine. You get less debt. <laughs> that means you put up more money. You put up more money, you get less debt. There you go. Adding down payment. Nick, that's a good question. You should be putting this in the uh, in the in the in the quiz. Okay, I filled up my fifteen questions, but I'll uh, 
yes. that, that quick you got you got all of that already okay so anyways that's how you lower your debt service all right so so dscr we have the dscr that is basically what the bank wants to show you so what what is it what does it mean if you're trying to get a 1.25 DSCR, but your property is doing point, your DSCR is 0.8. Okay, the, the, uh, you, you have your debt service is 1200. Right, so if this equals 0.8. What is this current number at right now? Come on, guys. Same math. <laughs> Same math we just did above. JJ, JJ with the with the with the quick answer right there. There you go. Yeah, twelve hundred times 0. 0.8. So your NOI is right now at nine sixty. Okay, reversing this at nine sixty. What do you need the debt to be at? For the bank to give you a deal you can't be at one point you can't be at point eight you need to be at you need to be at 1.25 what does this debt have to be at Ooh, are you sure about that you answer that a little quick Zoom user. You might have answered that question a little bit too quick. Because 960 times the answer is 768. Wow, JJ, you are you are a whiz. <laughs> yeah. So look, this is this is the simple math, right? So now we now we kind of understand this DSCR game. All right, so that's that's what the bank wants. All right. The other thing now, okay, let's let's go a little bit more about evaluating deals. Now we're going to talk about we got the DSCR. Now we're going to talk about cap rates. Okay, everybody hears this thing and is completely confused about what the hell this thing means. All right, cap rates, okay? So this is the formula I want everybody to just remember. Value equals NOI divided by cap rate. Okay. Once again, this is in the equation. So one, so the most important number to know in anything is NOI. What is NOI again? Who knows? We've said it. Yeah. Everything what? except everything except the debt. Everything except oh, the debt. And I, we need more specific than that. Something minus something else. Yeah, there you go. All right, Nick, you, you, you've, been, you've been around for a while. All income minus all expenses gives you NOI. So this is why this number is so important. Everybody looks at this number. All right, now value equals NOI divided by cap rates. What is a cap rate? equals what we're all just doing simple math i'm just teaching you guys how to move numbers around when you're looking at this the definition of cap rate is okay yes there you go noi times the value alex i think oh, it's divided Sorry. What? Divided by value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick and JJ, we got the two teens over here schooling everybody. <laughs> Come on, guys. So the cap rate is what? How do you determine cap rate? Right? Here's, here's kind of like uh, when you go look at a property. Okay, let's let's look at it this way. So the property is this certain asset in this market 
trades at a five cap. Okay, five cap is remember it's percentage. Cap rate is really the percentage to which NOI is to the value of the property. Okay, so it's it's five percent. If you have NO, if you have a if you have okay, let's let's do this real quick first. If you have a property that has a five cap rate, and you don't know what the NOI is, but they want four million dollars for the property. What is the NOI? Oh, and I already kind of wrote it out in formula for you guys. Cap rate is in percentage, so it should be represented like this. Boom. Hey. Everybody clear on how 200,000 came about. No. No? Okay. No. So your your NOI is 200k so you take 4 million, right? You you you're flip, you're moving the number around. So 4 million times 0 0.05. That gets you this 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 number. Yeah. 5% of 4 million that's basically what the cap rate is. So in a market, multifamily houses will trade at a certain cap rate depending on the class of the property. So your class A will typically trade between three and a half to four and a half percent cap rate, maybe. Like if you're lucky, you can get it at a four and a half, you can get it at a five, something like that. Okay, now the higher the cap rate means the higher the NOI you're gonna have based on your purchase price. Rule of thumb, if your cap rate is lower than the interest rate in which you're getting in at, you will probably be negative cash flowing. Okay, most likely. Unless you put a big down payment, then it would be different. Okay, so we have your, your cap rate. This is, the, this is the formula I want everyone to remember. Value equals NOI divided by cap rate. Now, if we had a property, let's redo this. So let's say um, you have an NOI of 200K and the prop and it's 5K, five, five cap rate. No, so it's, it's the market trades at five cap, but you go and offer at a six cap. Okay, you're like, I'm not going to offer a five cap. I offer at a six cap. How much is this? How much is your value, the, the offer going to be? Same thing based on 200K NOI. What's the purchase price? What's the offer you're making? <laughs> how did you guys come to that number? Yeah. So you take your 200,000, right? Because this is really, let me write it like this so we, we can see it better. So what, we're looking for this number, which is the, the value, the purchase price. So you move this over here and you switch them so that your, quote, your, your, your formula looks like X, which is the purchase price equals your NOI 200K divided by your cap rate which is 6%. So 200K divided by 0 0.06. Yes, like everybody said, your offer is going to be 3.33 million. Okay, this is, this is uh, you know, it's, it's, if you can understand this basic part, you'll understand a lot of looking at properties. And when people are talking about cap rates, you won't get very confused and lost. Cap rates, there's a certain cap rate that these deals go for. But that doesn't mean you have to pay that cap rate. You can offer. This is when you negotiate. You negotiate less. That means the cap rates go up. You know, one of the things you would say to a broker is, hey, man, I, I love this deal. But you're selling at a five and a half cap. I think it's very close. It would work. 
but I'm getting a, I'm getting debt at six and a half 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 interest. So I have to make my my offer okay at a six and a half cap. And brokers will understand that. And when you start speaking the lingo like that, they'll take you more seriously. Because you're telling them why you're making an offer this way. You're not just saying, hey, broker, uh, this is $4 million. I I'm offering $3 million. They're like, well, what's, the, what's the logic behind it? If you can explain the logic behind why you do things, then they will take you as an expert and take you as more seriously. And they'll show you other deals. They're like, okay, if this deal doesn't work, do you have a deal that I can get at around the six and a half cap? Now, one of the things, this is, this is just, uh, this might be a little advanced, but what brokers will show you is not the current NOI. See, this number is the current NOI, as is. What the broker will show you is the projected NOI. The current NOI, they might have 80K, and they're like, listen, it is a six and a half cap, but you got to do a whole bunch of these things and it's going to be 200K NOI and then you will have your six and a half cap. Why would I want to do that? I want to go in at a six and a half cap and then I'll go do all the other stuff and make it a nine cap for me so that I can make money. That's how you're going to determine a good deal. All right, so this is as basic as I can really get with multifamily. If anybody is confused, which I can... You know, I would be confused if it was my first time hearing this. Ask the questions to get clarity. Okay, don't sit here and be confused. So everybody's like super clear when we have our quiz, everyone's going to, when we have our game uh, quiz, game night, everyone is going to get first place. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, what I'm teaching right here, if my computer loads, what I'm teaching right here is very basic, okay? This is one part of something that is included and in something that I teach, which is a, a very comprehensive multifamily course. And what we will do in that course is go from A to Z and multifamily plus all the things that I've done to create success. So social media, the CRMs, the, the, all the tools that I use to help me be the best operator that I can be, be the best capital raiser I can be, be the best syndicator I can be, be the best leader in my group that I can be. Okay, and we made this super cheap, but there's one condition, you have to come with an accountability buddy. Okay, you cannot take this course alone. It needs to be someone, it needs to be accountability buddy, two people coming in, and this is a live eight to nine week, eight to 10 week program. Okay, uh, once a week and it will be live with me. And it's like, basically the reason why I'm offering it so cheap also is because you will be my beta group. Like we will test, you know, before this course gets launched for real, I'm looking for people that want to be a part of it. And, um, you know, it's extremely, extremely affordable, but the one caveat is you have to come with your buddy you have to come with an accountability buddy because there will be work that i expect that you guys will do and it has to be with your your accountability buddy because i want you guys to succeed i want this program to work and the only way it's going to work is not once a week you come on jump onto the call and try to learn you have to have somebody holding you accountable throughout the week from between the calls to do the work all right, so Nick has put that in there. Does that, Nick, does that go to a registration or does that go to a, an email? Because I want in there that they have to also put a name of someone that they're going to be bringing in with them. Right now it goes to a Mighty Networks. Well, it goes to landing page and then a Mighty Networks page. A Mighty Networks page. What page does that go to? It goes to access to the community. The what? The community to the 12 week community for 500 the payment page okay is that already set up yes oh great good job <laughs> and anyone that won access their buddy comes in for free yes so it's a two-person like pairs that come in here 
Okay. And you'll also be a part of, you'll also, it's on Tuesday nights. Uh, what time is it at? 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. And you'll be joined with a lot of the Legends members. So you also get to meet a lot of our members who are, you know, they've been going through this process for months and months, and they will all be great mentors and resources for anyone that joins. Okay, so this will be, we will, we will put this out there probably in the next week or so. It's going to start sometime in August. Um, so really excited for that. Okay, um, let's see. Let's get to game night, Nick. So we've, we're going to go to game night. And based on what I've shared, you guys are going to be tested on your knowledge. And you will be a part of a leaderboard at the end of every quarter right so we're not going to do this like short quarter that ends in august and ends in july and starts august we'll take it all the way to when's the next quarter end uh october all right so the whoever is going to be the leader the top maybe two or three places will win some kind of prize that we will put together um it'll be quarterly um winners but there will be a leaderboard going all right so here we go. Nick has created the, the, the link for us to be a part of. Your quarters are off a month. Uh, probably. That's why I need you here, Andrew. You got to correct me. So September 1st, right? Is the quarter. And September and December. Okay. Oh, October so Nick, 1st okay. starts okay. fourth quarter. Yeah, that's what I mean. It ends in October. It ends October 1st for the quarter. Yeah. All right. Okay. Don't ask me what a cap rate is. So <laughs> I know what a quarter ends, but I don't know. I can't tell you what a cap rate is. Come on. I just said a cap rate is your your uh NOI divided by the value. No, you okay. did. And you know, the you you explained it in a way I that maybe I've heard before, but I didn't really hear it. Um, so this was good. Okay, great. I want to make it mathematic for everybody. Words are hard. Numbers are easier. Numbers tell the truth. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Nick, it says purchase before July 12th. I don't know. Maybe that was a... I changed it. I changed it. Okay, you changed it. All right. So, everyone, you join Nick's link. It says brightful.me, whatever. Um, join in there. It's very simple. You just, like, I don't know, log on with, like, a name or something like that and we will start our game should i be sharing my screen nick or you? yeah i should share my screen right yeah not yet though not yet not yet but i want to i want everyone to see who's in here and who's not yeah uh, just it's just me and you okay so click on the link guys let's go game night all right when they made it JJ's in, Giovanna's in. Come on. You guys got this. Jessica's in, Allie's in, Will's in. Hey, in the meantime, Nick, can you just pull up the uh the leaderboard so far or have you calculated it yet? Um top five are only getting points, right? Huh? Five top. places get points. All right, here, let me uh, let me speed through this real quick. <laughs> All right, come on. We got, we'll do it one more minute of you guys the logging in. Before, though, we had about two, seven second places. All right, we'll give everybody points. Okay. Four points for second place. All right, 21 people in. There is 12 people with points from first, from the first week. Oof. Uh, I'll calculate at the end. Ali was in first place um, the first week. Donna was in first place the second week. All right. Well, Donna's not here. So she's going to miss. And she's going to. Nope. She, I thought she was going to join in right now. All right. Um, okay. Come on. Click on the link. Only 21 of you guys right now. I mean, you guys can watch, of course, but participate. It's fun. Get, get engaged. Have fun. Now, if you're driving, don't do it. If you're working, don't do it. I don't want anyone getting in trouble or in an accident. But if you're not doing anything, join us. 
Boom, boom. Okay, let's give it like 30 more seconds. All right. You know, there are those that play and those that sit on the bench and those that are just left out completely. Play. <laughs> Be a player. All righty. All right. Counting down. Ten, nine. If you're still signing in, say something. Eight, seven, seven seconds, six, five. Four, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, one. Heather oh, got it. Somebody <laughs> just got it. Nice. Look at that. All righty. All right. We're starting. Let's go. Let's go, Nick. Way to go, Heather. Okay. This is not time based, it is just as many questions as you get correct. You'll have a minute and a half for every question. Never mind. A minute is the maximum I can go. A minute for every question. There's 15 questions. Good All luck. Right. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Calculate the, the returns on stock. Can't be giving out the correct answers. <laughs> <laughs> And don't worry, guys. Andrea does not have the advantage the of questions. fast clicking. Yeah, the question disappeared. Yeah. I can't the, answer it. Don't look at Alex's I share. Can't. Make sure you're I can't look see. at your own screen, not my screen. Maybe Alex, stop sharing your screen. <laughs> oh, geez. Again. What about the people that, are, that are, aren't playing? You got to look at your own web browser, not my... Uh... Yeah, do not uh, look at Alex's browser. Make sure you're... Gosh, you. Alex, stop sharing. No, no, I still got to share. There's people that aren't playing, so they want to know what's going on, you know? Okay, make sure if you're playing the game, don't be on Alex's Zoom share screen. Make be sure. on your web browser. Oof. All righty. We're on a real estate call, guys. Who answered that this is to assess a business? <laughs> Which of the following DSC? Okay. I don't look at my screen, guys. Don't look at, don't cheat. All right, people are still thinking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Waiting on Barbara, Victor, Renee, and Kathy. Hey, Nick, make a note next week. We should have some music playing in the background. Okay. Let me see if I can pull some up. What kind of music do you think? Of? I don't hey. know. You don't have to do it now. We'll do it. We'll do it, you know. Hey, hey, the last time, the last question was what was most favorable. Like 2.8 is the highest. The higher the DSR, the better the deal. Now 1.2 is the minimum. I just want to note that. That was wrong. Oh, what did it say? What was considered something? The best. 2.8 would have been the best. Because oh, the higher the SCR, it's a better the deal, correct? The higher the number. That's, that's true. Is that's true. You, you write about Nick, that. Nick, Nick, I call you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. Let me get some music. What if you could? What? I'm gonna get some music. Yeah, What's Roberto, I saw that too, but the, I, but he drilled that 1.2 into our head so many times that that number just kept on flashing out of me. That 1.2. <laughs> you know, I think Roberto, Roberto might, might be, be the winner here for that for that answer. Alex, you're sharing your screen, so I can't play the music. And real estate, real estate is our business, right? So that's why I answered. Well, it's to evaluate the health of a business. Ah, oh, all right. 
That that was my logic behind it. I must have overthought about that. Question. Overthought it. Oh wait, hold on. Crap. Alex, can I send you a YouTube link to play the music of? Yeah. Okay. There you go. I texted it to you. Hey, Nick, how long are you going to be in Vegas? So next Wednesday. Nice. So you playing hard? We're playing hard. <laughs> Yeah, playing hard. You're in Vegas, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, I'm gambling every night. <laughs> <laughs> we are playing Monopoly Deal. Yeah, that's a very high stakes tournament we have going. Alex, gotta share sound though, because we can't hear the sound. Yeah, but what? I can't even hear it on my computer. Oh, I know why. Hold on. Well, when you share your screen, you gotta, yeah, that's uh, right. What's the, it's saying on the game that your browser's inactive. Oh yeah. Next yeah. question. That's that one. I think I almost got this one wrong. <laughs> it's a right? trick question. You gotta get a hundred. I specifically asked you about this question when I was waiting for you. It's a stumper. We've stumped seven people. Time's running out. Sure, Cheryl, you can just unmute yourself and ask. 10%. <laughs> is it? No, it is not. Or five. No, oh, it is not. So it's. Oh, wait. 2.5. Some people, 2 some people think it. So remember, value equals NOI divided by cap rate. You take 160,000 divided by 2 million to get the point at the 8%. Uh-oh. 
Well, time's running out. <laughs> I have no eyes, no clue. This is another kind of stumper. seconds. not in the game you can still kind of pay attention to what you guys think i'll keep the answers on there longer instead of choosing something is here. She's not answering these questions. No, she lost her game. Oh, no. Can you hit refresh? I'm using the zoom link again, but I don't know if that'll work. Kalina's drawing on my screen. You might have, you might have moved it to a different map. You may have made it another window. Keep that way. You know, Nick, I need to figure out why I can't get these emoji things. Yeah. I'm gonna... Send, send the link again if you can in the chat for her, see if she can still get in. I question my rounding is a little off, but everyone will get the gist. back. 
Ooh, kind of a trick question. <laughs> How do I remove this line on my screen? Man? Can't hear you. Motivate a bar, the green bar where you're shooting the bananas, with the action. Ah. I'm definitely going to call foul on that question right there, right? Well, people put slightly, generate slightly less fast, though. It is. It's generating more. Yeah, more. Both people put slightly less. What? Why did it, it said no points for you, and I got it right. It's generating just enough. Okay. Okay. It's generating more. It's more. It's 1.1. 1. 1. Technically. Yeah, that's what I 1. showed. 1.1. It's more. That's foul. Foul. I'm going foul on that one. <laughs> now you're pissing me off. Pencil. You're killing me over here now. I thought we we're doing multifamily. Let's put to the single family too. I'm talking about single family. This is in here now. I think this is the only single family question. Can we get this results, the questionnaire after this? Like the copy is. We get results, Nick. I mean, some of these questionable, I guess. Oh crap. I didn't do the math. Where's my mouse? Yeah. Oh, I got it. <laughs> 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 oh, that was funny. 
Oh, come on. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're funny. <laughs> Play again. <laughs> All right. Man, we got to revisit some of these questions. They were highly, highly questionable. Those answers, all right? At least two of them I need right. to be contested. That's true. That's true. All right. Listen, Nick's doing his best. You know, some of the questions he's got to come up with on the fly while we're doing this call. So. Those weren't even the questionable ones. It was the ones that ChatGPT gave us an hour ago. That was the questionable one. Hey, guys. Guys, guys, guys. I just got news. So we're going to go visit somebody. Um, Mel Gibson is going to be at the studio all week till Saturday. And this guy owns the studio. So... He's the one that wants to help build this big building. <laughs> Andrea. Oh, God. She can't hide her feelings. I guess she nice. doesn't like Mel Gibson. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is a bit of an asshole, but still. <laughs> he's, he's very well connected, though, man. Yeah. All right. Um, that's it. That's all. Oh, wait, no. Networking. We got a networking event out there. What did you guys think about the game? Let me get some feedbacks. The first week it was too long. Second week it was too short. This one was kind of in the middle. Okay, cool. I love Great. this. I love this game. I love this right. game. We're gonna we're gonna have the, the leaderboard established and maybe we'll post it somewhere, Nick. We should have like a um make a landing page for this call. And have the leaderboard right there. Alrighty. <laughs> Make it 20 questions. When we had 20 questions, it was too long. I think 15. I think this was a good number. What do you guys think? You guys think it was a good number? It was good. Good number. Yeah. Good. It took about 20 minutes. Perfect. Nobody's falling asleep. If we would have only had 15 questions the first week, I would have won. All right. Because it, it seems like everything went downhill, like from 59. I was like on such a roll. And then I don't know what the hell. Chat GPT went off the rails. And uh, I got every last last five wrong. So I'm just okay. saying. I could keep the questions longer on the screen, obviously. But, you know, this is for everyone to, you know, you, you want to be in the game and you can keep it on as long as you want, you know. So you got a minute, 30 seconds, basically, to answer that. Because we knew we knew there's some words, some calculations that you have to do here and there. So we did that. Some tricky questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, you know, on these calls, I want to make it educational. I want to make it fun. And then I also, of course, want to give you guys the opportunity to, to, uh, to meet each other. Right. And, and there's probably most of you guys have already met each other. But like I said, the Zoom gods, there is no accidents where you end up. So, yeah, let's let's get them out into the network, Nick, so that they can meet each other. Share just a little bit about yourself. What did you guys learn today? Um, you know, and, and what you need. Like, see, the question that you want to always ask is what you need and, and what you can serve, how you can serve. So those two things, where you're from, all of that. Go. Go meet your go meet your future business partner. Go meet your future, you know, something. The breakout rooms are open, by the way. By recording, Alex, you should stop the recording. Oh right.